Hey guys, before I begin the finale, I want to give a huge thanks to Wargaming for sponsoring this episode and giving me the opportunity to try out their awesome game, World of Warships. It's an online game that combines action and strategic gameplay in a world of warships, hence the name of the game. You get to command a massive naval fleet featuring some of the history's most iconic war vessels and you get to team up with six other players for an insane 7 on 7 battle in the ocean. Everything from the sound effects to the graphics are done very well and it requires strategy to beat the opposing team. Since launch, they have over 200 ships across 8 different nations and you can choose from up to 4 different classes of ships and upgrade them as you progress through the game. Wargaming currently has over 7 million players worldwide and their game World of Warships is free to play. But just for my subscribers watching, I'm going to hook you guys up with some awesome rewards that includes a million credits, a premium ship, and more if you download the game using my link below. So we made it to Philip's house around 1pm and we didn't waste any time. We started to remove his old crappy desk so that I could build him a new setup. This was obviously the first time I've built a setup from scratch in someone else's house. So I was kind of worried about a few things. You know, I was worried about not finishing on time. I was worried about damaging his wall. I was also worried about the setup looking like crap in the end. You know, it's one thing to design it and see it on paper and it's another thing to actually build it and see it in person. All right, so basically this is the wall we're gonna be working with. Um, this is where we're gonna be putting the setup together. And uh, already we're coming across our first issue and we haven't even begun. So the tabletop we're gonna be using is actually 74 inches wide. But upon further investigating, I don't think there's gonna be plenty of, or enough space to put that on there because the tabletop comes all the way up here and it's gonna cover up the third drawer. There's gonna be one Alex drawer specifically used to hold the PC and then two other Alex drawers that are gonna be the support for the entire desk. So unfortunately we're gonna have to cut off one Alex drawer and just use two and put the tabletop on there and the PC is gonna go on the far right end. Little did I know that was the beginning of the many bumps along the road. I think I miscalculated or mismeasured something and uh, we're gonna have to go with the flow unfortunately. Wait, what the hell is that? Is this lube? Interesting stuff down here once we remove the desk. So we're gonna have to vacuum it up real quick. Um, so yeah guys, make it a habit to clean behind your desk once in a while. You might have some stuff that drops back here that you don't even know. Pencil. Obviously the only person in the room is me and my cousin Bob who is filming the video and also helping me put together this setup. Philip is kind of just chilling in the living room so that we can call him in here and film his reaction once everything is done. All right, so I want to mount the ultra wide against the wall and we're going to be using the mounted to do so. So the only issue with this type of mount is that it really depends on where the stud is against the wall because if it's kind of uh, too far to the left or too far to the right, then the monitor is not going to be centered exactly in the middle. So that's going to be the tricky part. So I guess I'm going to have to figure out where the stud goes, where the stud is. Because you guys know me, I want to make it as symmetrical and as centered as possible. So I will need my stud finder, which is this little thing. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, it was somewhere in the middle. All right, so we got one right here. The next stud is over here. Because this is too far to the left and then this is too far to the right. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that this is center or at least as close as possible to the middle because otherwise it's not gonna look good. How does it look? Actually, 
pretty, pretty, pretty center. Pretty yeah. Center, yeah. All right. I mean, we could always adjust the arm just a little bit, maybe pop it out to uh, compensate, but only way, one way to find out, honestly, because there's really no other option. I just realized what we forgot. I've got to pick up the cable raceway to hide the cables running down the monitor. Uh, I thought I see. I told you guys. I knew I was gonna forget something, and that's only one of the things I just realized. So after six very long hours, we finally managed to complete the setup, uh, but with some minor complications, which I will go over near the end. But for now, here is his reaction. Okay, stop there. Go for it. Holy smokes. What? Dude, that's insane. Anything I've now? never even seen anything like this crazy. It's dead silent too. You can't even hear that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> oh my goodness. What do you think about the color scheme? It's I know amazing. you said you love uh, white and blue, so we try to do. That's so nice, possible. man. Thank you so much. Nice, dude. Yeah, hey, no worries, man. You deserve it. Thanks, man. I want to show you one cool thing, though. All right. I don't know if you noticed that over there, the little plaque. Yeah. Huh? Your number one contestant, so you're the first person <laughs> to ever win. And the cool thing about it, it's got a remote, so you can actually. Turn it on. Oh, Turn no on. way! Cool. That's awesome. So you can change the colors too. You can make it red, white. <laughs> Holy smokes. It's all... <laughs> it's all color coded. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's dope. It's dope. But yeah, these Sweet, speakers, man. man, they're really nice. Let me... Uh, yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's cue something up. Dude, yeah. You guys are ultra right here. Like yeah, that's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So yeah, man, this thing's packing 7600K. I overclocked it for you. It's at 4.9 gigahertz. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's maximum. Overclocked the graphics card as well. I even overclocked your monitor. It's at 100 hertz refresh rate. What? Yeah, it's got G-Sync as well, so you can pretty much tear any game. Uh, max out settings. You got 32 gigs of RAM. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's RGB as it's well. It's so pretty. <laughs> And the Asus Strix uh, 1070. Oh, one of the cool things about your uh, headphone anchor, if you noticed here. It's the UPS. Yeah, it's USB got port? three USB ports plugged in. So it can actually, while it's hanging, you can plug in the cable and let it juice up. So next oh, time you're ready to cool. use it. Yeah, you're ready to go. Thanks for everything, man. I, I mean, I honestly don't have words for you guys. Like, you're welcome. I deserve it. Beyond anything anyone's ever done for me. 
Yeah, and thank you, Cooler Master. I'm very appreciative. But yeah, man, I think we're out of here. Um, Sweet, bro. Enjoy your new setup again. If you have any questions, yeah, have me out there. Thanks, buddy. Don't worry. No. That was good. And you, you let your brother play, right? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I would say I'm pretty damn satisfied with how everything turned out near the end. I have to keep telling myself that this is my first time doing something this big, so obviously it's not going to be perfect for my first time. But believe me, I've learned so much from this experience that I'm going to bring with me for the next contestant. Obviously, I wanted to keep everything either white and blue, but Cooler Master just doesn't have any white options available. Until recently, they announced their new white H500P. But the PC was built like two months before that announcement. Otherwise, believe me, I would have used that case for the build. If there's one thing I can tell Cooler Master to focus on this year, I would say please, for the love of God, do us all a favor and please work on more white product. We need to see white keyboards, mouse, and even case options, please. So I had this one of a kind custom plaque made just for the series with Philips name on it and the setup makeover logo, which kind of sits on this stand with RGB strips underneath that you can control using a remote. And I thought that was pretty cool. Now, originally I planned to have the plaque sit directly right smack in the center of the setup, but the height of the actual desk and the monitor were different in person. So the plaque ended up blocking the monitor view. So I had to move it over to the side, which actually ended up looking a lot better. Unfortunately, now there's this nasty cutout that's visible from the add-on unit. And that's originally where the plaque was supposed to be. <sighs> Another issue I ran into, believe it or not, I know it's coming from me, was the cable management. There is this nasty cable running down the center of the desk, which annoyed me so much. Okay, so the wire is actually the cable coming from the left speaker that needs to be plugged into the subwoofer, otherwise it's not gonna work. And the reason why it's running straight down is because the cable is so short that there isn't enough slack to run it across the back of the desk and behind one of the Alex drawers. And the funny thing about all this is it's an easy fix. All I had to do was cover up the cable using a wall raceway, which is one of the items that I forgot to bring with me. I also forgot to bring the white cable sleeve, which was supposed to be used to cover up the cables near the bottom. You know, as someone who has really high standards and this obsession with perfection, I was honestly disappointed that this was the reflection of my work. It bothered me so much that I even wanted to go back, pick it up and then come back another day. But at that point, I just wanted Philip to enjoy his setup. We already made him wait like four months for it. I've learned so much from this entire project. And honestly, none of this would have been possible if it weren't for Cooler Master, who supplied most of the PC parts and the peripherals for this setup. Also a huge thanks to ASUS for providing me with the graphics card and motherboard. And of course, a huge, huge thanks to David for working with me on the design and 3D printing these awesome items. Overall, I would say season one was a huge success in my part. Philip did enjoy his setup and he said that there's nothing that he would change. It's perfect the way it is. The only thing I recommended to him was the cable raceway to cover up that wire and of course a touch of his personality as he gets used to the setup. Whether it's pictures hanging from the wall or whatever it is, he needs to add some personality to make that setup his. And that pretty much wraps up the first season of Setup Makeover. I want to give a huge thanks to Philip for being such a cool dude. Uh, again, congratulations on your setup. You completely deserve it. And again, a huge thanks to all my subscribers for watching and the amazing feedback that you guys left for episode one. I love every single one of your faces. Thank you so much. As always, guys, don't forget that the first 300 viewers to use the code PLAYWARSHIPS2018 can get 250 doubloons. 1 million credits, a premium ship, and more by downloading the game using my link below. I want to start season 2 very soon because I had so much fun doing the first one. Uh, it's not going to take as long though because I've learned so much from it. So if you're watching this video and you need a setup makeover, make sure you're glued to the channel because I'll be making an announcement within the next 1 to 2 months on the channel. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Everything mentioned in the videos or shown in the video will be linked below. I love your faces, like I said before, and I'll see you in the next one.